The sport of boxing has always been shady. Accusations of fixed fights, gambling, promoters taking advantage of their fighters. Don King was alleged to have milked Mike Tyson out of millions of dollars back in the 80s and 90s. Now, even though the behind-the-scenes aspect of boxing wasn't exactly on the level, the fighters themselves were respected. There used to be prestige in the sport of boxing. Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Lennox Lewis, Roy Jones Jr. These were all respected fighters. The past few years, boxing has turned into a circus. One of the problems, there's not one regulating body. MMA, they have UFC, they have Bellator other smaller promotions, but there's one regulating body, one leader of each promotion, UFC, Dana White, Bellator, whoever the hell runs Bellator. It's not like that in boxing. You have the IBF, the WBF, WTF, that's what I think when I think of boxing, WTF. How confusing can one sport become? There is no longer respect. There is no longer prestige in boxing. Like I said, it has become a circus. It is nothing but an exhibition, a cash grab. If you order a boxing pay-per-view in 2021, you deserve to be ripped off. One of the people actively ripping people off, one of the people responsible, at least partially responsible, for turning boxing into an embarrassment is Jake Paul. And look, Jake Paul, he didn't start the decline of boxing. The sport has been in decline for decades, but he is hastening the embarrassment of the sport. Jake Paul is an amateur boxer acting like a professional. I watched both of his fights against Teron Woodley. Now, I didn't pay for them, of course. I watched them after the fact, once they were free. I wouldn't pay a dollar to watch Jake Paul make a fool of himself. You can watch him do that every day on his YouTube channel for free. Both of his fights against Teron Woodley were disastrous. They were so boring. You have two guys, neither one of them actual boxers standing in the ring for an hour, hugging each other like Clay Aiken hugs his husband. Teron Woodley is a legend in UFC. That does not make him a professional boxer. There is a huge difference between boxing and mixed martial arts. But KC, Conor McGregor went 10 rounds with Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> okay, again, that was an exhibition. Floyd Mayweather controlled that entire fight. The result was never in doubt. He toyed with Conor McGregor. He allowed that fight to go 10 rounds so fans felt like they got their money's worth. Floyd Mayweather, he just simply let Conor McGregor tire himself out. By the 8th or ninth round, Conor McGregor couldn't even breathe. Boxing is no longer about the competition. It's no longer about two elite fighters squaring off. It has become an avenue for C-list celebrities to get into a ring, bore the shit out of people for an hour, and steal $40 or $50, $60 in some cases. Judging by the most recent pay-per-view numbers, people are starting to wake up. Either that, or they're just sick of Jake Paul's dumbass. Streaming numbers are not available yet for the December 18th ballet between Jake Paul and Teron Woodley. Now, I find that kind of suspect. Here we are, damn near... Two weeks later, and we don't have even preliminary streaming numbers available? We do have traditional pay-per-view numbers, though. Now, keep in mind, the first Paul Woodley fight drew half a million pay-per-view buys. Now, whether you like Jake Paul or not, you've got to admit, that is damn impressive. The magic number in pay-per-view is normally about one million, but this kid selling half a million is impressive. Unfortunately for him... The magic is gone. The rematch completely bombed. Less than 65,000 people donated their $60 to watch another boring fight. Fake wrestling drew more interest than Jake Paul. AEW full gear in November eclipsed 65,000 buys. Now, estimates are showing, even with streaming numbers included, the rematch between Jake Paul and Teron Woodley is going to struggle to hit 100,000 buys. In other words... Box office bomb. This dude has over 20 million subscribers on YouTube, a free platform for unlimited advertising and promotion. And you couldn't convince 1% of them to watch you fight? 
Defenders of Jake Paul, they have already come up with the excuses. It was the sixth sports-related pay-per-view in two months. People ran out of money. It was overpriced. I saw one excuse while I was researching this. I think it was on SB Nation. It said something to the effect of, it was a lot to ask of customers to spend $60 the week before Christmas during a global pandemic. <laughs> okay, so now the Kobe is to blame. The Kobe is to blame for the lack of interest. Hell, we blame the Kobe for everything else. Why not add Jake Paul's failure to that list? Lack of money is not to blame. Scheduling the fight the week before Christmas, that's not the reason it bombed. The Kobe is not the reason it bombed. The reason Jake Paul bombed at the box office, people are not interested in Jake Paul. Floyd Mayweather was a boring boxer. He was a defensive fighter, which makes for a boring fight in most cases anyway. For over 10 years, he sold millions of pay-per-views. Why? When it comes to book smarts, Floyd Mayweather is out of his realm. That ain't for him. Hell, I think he's illiterate. But when it comes to marketing, he is brilliant. He knows how to elicit emotion. He knew how to get people invested. Whether you paid to watch Floyd Mayweather win or paid hoping to get his ass kicked, either way, you paid. Floyd Mayweather knew how to get people to love him, and he knew how to get people to hate him. He knew how to generate heat, good heat, which is essential in the promotion business. We've talked about this before. You have good heat and go-away heat. Jake Paul is developing go-away heat. People are becoming apoplectic towards him. They don't give a shit. Now, I have seen people credit Jake Paul as some sort of marketing genius. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from him. He did a great job hyping up the first fight between him and Teron Woodley. But there is a big difference between success and sustained success. There have been many people make it to the top of the mountain, but very, very few can stay on top. The music industry is littered with one-hit wonders. Only a few have been able to maintain their careers over multiple decades. I think Jake Paul knows this because he is starting to get desperate. He keeps calling out UFC fighters that he has no chance in fighting at this point. He is constantly in the media taking shots at Dana White. This man's addicted to drugs. I challenge him to take a drug test. Who gives a shit if Dana White's an addict? If he is, he is the most productive and successful drug addict that I have ever seen. Dana White, he continues feeding into this bullshit. He told Jake Paul that he would take a drug test only if he could test take uh, Jake Paul for steroids. He keeps complaining, Jake Paul does, about UFC payouts, claiming Dana White doesn't adequately pay his fighters. Now, Dana White has been criticized about this for years, but if that's the case, why is Jake Paul angling to get into the UFC? For a promotion that doesn't pay their fighters well, Jake Paul sure seems to want to be a part of it. When we talked about this two weeks ago, I thought Jake Paul would be given an opportunity in the UFC. When it comes to making money, Dana White will put personal beefs aside. He did that for years with Tito Ortiz. But after his most recent fight, bombing on pay-per-view, I don't know if Dana White's going to be interested in Jake Paul. When he brought in CM Punk a few years ago, at least CM Punk had sustained success on pay-per-view over a number of years in the WWE. Jake Paul is on the verge of being a one-hit wonder. This dude is so desperate right now, he's talking about trying out for the NFL. The NFL. This fucking guy's barely a boxer. And now he thinks he can make an impact, make a team, in the most competitive sports league in the world? Classic attention-seeking behavior. Maybe if we ignore him, Jake Paul will go away. Now, I'm not contributing to that cause by talking about him for the second time in two weeks. But let me know what you guys think of Jake Paul bombing at the box office. Is his boxing career, and I, I hate to call it a career, but is his boxing career, for lack of a better word, is it on the verge of being over? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.